Here we go again. <laughs> hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to the gray area. The space between black and white, where nuances live, and nothing is ever quite as simple as it seems. You know I'm your host, Tarns Brown Archangel, whichever one you know me as is cool. And today we're diving into a fragile architect of the human mind, into what it means to forget, and what it costs us when we do. This is forgotten. The four faces of amnesia. We all forget things, that's true. Where we put our keys, someone's name, that one actor, in that one movie. Remember you be, that, I remember. Yeah, that right there. But amnesia, that's not just forgetfulness. It's something deeper, more haunting. It's not just the loss of a memory. It's the loss of who you are in time. Today we're unpacking the four primary types of amnesia. Interrograde, retrograde, disassociative, and traumatic. Each with its own symptoms, each with its own story. Okay, let's start with interrograde amnesia. Imagine your life as a hallway. Every moment you live is a door you walk through. But suddenly the doors ahead won't open. You remember everything before this moment, but nothing after it sticks. That's interrograde amnesia. The inability to form new memories after an incident. It's the condition famously portrayed in films like Memento or 50 First Dates. I like that movie, to be honest. But in real life, it's often caused by damage of the hippocampus. That's the part of your brain responsible for moving experiences from short-term memory to long-term storage. Some of the common causes, brain injuries, alcohol-related brain damage, stroke, brain inflammation. People with interrograde amnesia live in a loop. They may remember you today, but forget you tomorrow. They can function in a moment, but the moment never lasts. They're awake, alert, present, but trapped in now. Okay, now flip the script. You know who you are right now, but the past, gone, blurred, erased. That's retrograde amnesia. The loss of memories that were formed before a trauma or illness. Sometimes it's just a few hours lost. Other times, it's years or an entire identity vanished. Some of the causes, head trauma, stroke, seizures, infections like encephalitis, and in rare cases, emotional trauma. You might remember how to play the piano or ride a bike because of procedure memory, muscle memory, it often survives. But your episodic memory, the story of your life, that's what's torn away. And the strangest part, you don't know what you lost because how can you miss something you don't remember having? Okay, now we're gonna cross over from neurological to psychological. Disassociative amnesia isn't caused by brain damage. It's caused by the mind protecting itself. Man. This is memory loss triggered by extreme psychological stress or trauma. It's the kind of amnesia you see in people who survive war, abuse, or disaster. Not because their brain is broken, but because it's overwhelmed. Sometimes it's localized, like just a block of time. Sometimes it's selective, you know, for specific events. In rare cases, it's generalized, a loss of an entire identity. This isn't someone faking either. This isn't someone lying. It's the brain hitting the emergency switch. Forget to survive. 
And here's the thing. Disassociative amnesia often coexists with other disorders like PTSD, depression, or disassociative identity disorder. It's memory folded inward. A scar the mind can't look at, so it pretends it isn't there. And then there's traumatic amnesia, a broader term that can encompass both physical and emotional trauma. But usually it refers to amnesia caused by sudden brain injury. Think car accidents, falls, blunt force trauma, explosions. Victims may experience both anterograde and retrograde memory loss. You might wake up and not remember what happened before the injury or struggle to retain anything after. There can be confusion, disorientation, gaps that never close. Sometimes it fades over time, sometimes it doesn't. The brain and its healing process, it's mysterious, man. And it's uneven. <laughs> and what's often worse than forgetting is the creeping realization of what you've forgotten. That gut feeling that something important is missing and may never return. Memory is more than information. It's more than facts and dates and birthdays, man. It's who we are. It's the reason we fear. The reason we trust. The reason we love certain songs or flinch at certain smells or feel comfort in places that make no sense till we remember. Amnesia doesn't just rob you of memory. It steals context. It breaks the mirror of self. But here's the irony of it all. Even without memory, the body remembers. The nervous system remembers. The emotional echo remains. And sometimes, healing begins not with retrieving the past, but accepting the present. So what's the gray area here? That's the best question to ask. It's an understanding that not all forgetting is failure. Not all memory loss is tragedy. Sometimes forgetting is defense. Sometimes it's injury. And sometimes it's grace. In a culture obsessed with remembering everything, we rarely ask what it means to let go. We rarely ask who we become when the past no longer has power over us. But maybe the real question isn't, what have I forgotten? Maybe it's, who am I becoming despite of? You know this is a big think tank. Gray area is about thinking. So you can always leave comments at the bottom. Talk to somebody else about this. Spread the word, you know what I'm saying? It's cool to think, man. It's cool to talk amongst people. Human connection is the greatest gift we got. But with that being said, thanks for stepping into the memory maze with me. You know, this has been a great area. Y'all know my name, Tons Brown, Archangel, whichever one you like to say. If this episode stirred up something in you, share it with somebody who's walking through their own fog and leave a review to help others find their way here. Till next time, remember.